Good morning. Welcome to this service of morning worship on the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We now listen to our first hymn. Excelling joy of heaven to earth come down, fixing us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown, Jesus. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world 
and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first Bible reading is read by Janice Knowles, followed by the Teze chant, Bless the Lord my soul, then our second reading is read by Paul Hancock. A reading from Romans chapter 14. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarrelling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honour of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honour of the Lord since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live for the Lord and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Matthew chapter 18. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and, as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him, and forgave him the debt. But that slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down, and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, there it is, the reading in which Jesus tells us that we have to forgive other people without counting the number of times we forgive. If you remember last week's reading, Jesus was instructing his disciples on how to bring about reconciliation when someone has offended you. So now Peter continues the conversation and asks, well, just how often should he forgive if another member of the church sins against him? Jesus says, mm, 77 times. In other words, there is no limit. He is saying that if you have to count, then you are not on the right path. And to emphasise the point, Jesus goes on to tell the parable of the forgiven servant. Jesus wants Peter to rethink, for his mind to be changed, maybe to see a bigger picture. I think we often confuse forgiving with forgetting, and we may also ha have that terrible phrase, love means never having to say you're sorry, in our collective memory. It is a quote made famous from the 1970s film Love Story and it is probably significant for that scene but it doesn't apply to all situations. In fact I think most of us would say that love means you do have to say that you are sorry. Forgiveness is also a significant part of our worship experience. In the confession which comes towards the beginning of our worship we ask God's forgiveness for our sins, things done and things left undone. Each Sunday and each time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we ask, forgive us our trespasses, our sins, as we forgive those who trespass, who sin against us. But still, forgiveness is difficult. It's often hard to forgive ourselves, never mind to forgive other people. Yet Jesus says, regardless of how hard it is, there is no limit to forgiveness, which I am sure is something that is challenging to each and every one of us. We may not believe that God can forgive us, or we may not believe that we can or need to forgive other people. In order to help us reflect upon what Jesus is saying, he gives us a parable, which tells of a servant who cannot repay his king. And so the king decides to sell him and his possessions in order for the payment to be made. 
This is a, a horrific thought, but something which those listening would understand as part of what happened in their time. But the servant begs for time, and the king takes pity and decides to release and forgive him his debt. For the listeners, this would have been shocking as it was a huge debt. So the king is behaving in an amazing way. And as in so many of the parables, the king, or equivalent, is extravagant. There is no stinting in the generosity here. Just like the water changed into wine, it is overflowing. With all of the listeners, our sympathies would be with the first servant, as we know how amazing and grateful he would have felt. But then, well, just how ungrateful can you be? And we just want to be like the other servants and contact the king and let him know just how badly the first servant is behaving and how he should be punished, which is, of course, what happens. But before we get too high and mighty, Jesus turns to us and says that if we behave like the first servant, then we will be treated in a similar way. Jesus says, so my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. We are to imagine ourselves as the first servant receiving forgiveness beyond measure and how that is life changing in all sorts of ways. And from this we turn and can forgive other people. The first servant sees the lifting of the debt as a chance to get his life sorted out and hopefully never get into that way again. So he needs his money from the other servant. Surely the king can see this. But Jesus wants us to look wider than just ourselves and our lives. He wanted the servant, and of course Peter, and therefore you and me, to see forgiveness in action and learn how to do it, so that more than one life can be changed. Bishop Tom Wright says that forgiveness is like air in our lungs. There's only room for us to inhale the next lungful when we've just breathed out the previous one. We are either open or closed to forgiveness. If we are open, able and willing to forgive others, we will also be open to receive God's love and forgiveness. But if we are locked up to one, we will be locked up to the other. It has been important for me to remember that forgiving doesn't mean that we allow abuse or people to walk over us. It doesn't mean that we let unjust action take place, nor does it mean forgetting, nor does it mean that it's not important. But if we are not open to forgiveness, then we will remain locked up and not able to breathe and grow and unable to experience all that the risen Jesus Christ has for us and all that through us he has for our society. So let us believe that God forgives us and let us in turn ask his help to forgive other people. Amen. And now our profession of faith. Let us affirm our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature died for us and rose again. I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. During our church services, we give thanks for the offering of money to the work of the church and its ministry. 
Many of us are now giving by standing order and some of us continue to bring money to the church services. In whatever way you give, as part of our worship and part of our lives as Christians, I say this prayer. Generous God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, receive our offerings, symbols of the work you have given us to do. Use them, use us, in the service of your world, to the glory of your name. Amen. And now as people of God, it is our duty and also our joy to make our prayers of intercession. So let us pray. And our response to the Lord is full of compassion is his love lasts forever. The Lord is full of compassion. His love lasts forever. Thank you, Father, for the love which forgives again and again and is prepared to trust us with the care of your people, even after we have let you down many times. Teach us to minister to one another's needs with compassion, sensitivity and discipline, so that all are affirmed and encouraged. The Lord is full of compassion. His love lasts forever. Thank you, Father, for the order and variety, simplicity and complexity of this universe. Thank you for all that humankind is able to do. May all these gifts be used wisely and well, for the good of all, including those as yet unborn. The Lord is full of compassion. His love lasts forever. Thank you, Father, for what we have been forgiven and for the opportunities we have each day to learn the joy of forgiving others. Break through our self-righteousness and keep us learning in humility at your feet. The Lord is full of compassion. His love lasts forever. Thank you, Father, for all those who care for the sick, the unstable, the ungrateful and the difficult. We pray for all who are on the receiving end of hate, deceit, suspicion or abuse, and for those who cause others pain and distress of any kind. We pray for healing and transformation. The Lord is full of compassion. His love lasts forever. Thank you, Father, for those whose living and dying has taught us much about love. Freed from their pain and restrictions of age or injury, may they enjoy forever the life of heaven. The Lord is full of compassion. His love lasts forever. Thank you, Father, for disturbing our complacency and challenging us to move forward with you, assured of your company and your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, we join with Christians throughout the world to say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining in with the worship this morning. Our online services throughout this week are accessible via our Facebook pages, and I look forward to gathering with you then. And now our closing responses and blessing. Beside us, 
beneath us, behind us, before us. Jesus is here. Around us, amongst us, about us, ahead of us. Jesus is here. Leading us, protecting us, challenging us, loving us. Jesus is here. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Stay in peace, loving and serving the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>